Welcome back to Master Glass with me, Livio Laro. I am excited today to talk about the evolution of the cocktail shaker. This incredibly iconic tool has brought us for centuries great cocktails. We're gonna talk about how it started, how it turned into what it is today. I'm excited, let's get into this. So there's probably no piece of uh, literature out there that can completely trace back the whole story of how on earth these wonderful timepieces came to play. Uh, something that comes in extremely close and is always quoted as the best resource is this book by Steve Visakay called Vintage Barware. I had the pleasure of working with Steve on a project a few years back. I will leave a link to this book in the show description below because it has really incredible information. So what can we say about mixing cocktails and how they were done thousands of years ago? Well, we do know that residue of an old gourd, or let's just call it a big squash, uh, was analyzed and could be traced back to having contents inside that were different beverages. So this gourd was in essence used as a cocktail shaker, and we're talking 7,000 years ago. We also know that in, the, in 1520, a Spanish explorer reported back to the Spanish crown that in South America, they were using a special vessel to make a special drink made with cacao, and that that vessel was used especially for mixing. So the shaker as we know it today, was created sometime in the mid 19th century. By the 1830s, it was already custom to have it in most, if not all bars. Uh, prior to the shaker being invented, uh, the best way to actually do it was basically bartenders would toss back and forth two glasses to mix their ingredients. But it did take a little bit of ingenuity for somebody to figure out at some point at that time that if they took a metal uh, tin and they put it over a glass with a smaller mouth, that the addition of ice would shrink the metal and create a seal. And once this style of shaking was invented or this style of mixing was invented, it became so popular. Of course, as you know today, the cocktails came out so much cleaner, the mixing was so much better and hence, we had what, we, what is today called the Boston Shaker. So by the 1850s, the all metal cocktail shaker was already widely available. Uh, in 1862, another important timeline, uh, Jerry Thomas writes the very first uh, cocktail book. And in that book, the explanation of shaking was readily available, of course, leading us to believe that shaking cocktails at that time was, of course, a common thing to do. Now, the only reason why we know the shape of this early shaker and that, in essence, the smaller vessel fits right into the bigger one was because in 1899, there was a book written by Tom Hall called Tales, and in it, he basically explains that process. Now, in the words of cocktail historian, uh, David Wandrich, who we've spoken about many times on this show, uh, 1840s, 1850s, when the shaker was around, it was simply too simple for the American ingenuity thought process to stay that simple. And hence why for about a hundred years after that, up until the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, uh, all these new types of cocktail shakers and their different forms came into play and became prominent throughout American pop culture. So throughout the years, various uh, improvements and various new patents were issued uh, to basically improve upon the cocktail shaker. And as I mentioned, all these shapes uh, in addition came out kind of as a fun way to promote the cocktail shaker. But after all this was said and done, there were really three styles of shakers that uh, made their way to common bars. And the first one was the good old fashioned first one, right, which now took the name as the Boston Shaker. Uh, the second one was used basically in France and in the UK called the Parisian Shaker. It's a two piece and in essence, it is just a fancier way to put one vessel inside of the other. And so this here was the Parisian Shaker and then came uh, because of a very popular cocktail called the Sherry Cobbler, uh, the, the third shaker took the name of the Cobbler Shaker, as uh, Harry Johnson explains it in his 
cocktail book as uh, the Sherry Cobbler was one of the most popular cocktails at the time. And this shaker here uh, had a third piece in it. And rather than being a two-piece shaker, it has a built-in strainer and it has a cap on the top. Uh, now, throughout the years that I bartended in Italy, we used the three-piece shaker all throughout the 90s. As a matter of fact, this one here, made by the Alessi Company, uh, I believe was actually displayed at the Guggenheim Museum as a piece of art. The cool thing about this one is it did not stick, unlike these, uh, because as you know, the ice will start uh, basically uh, sucking in the metal and then it becomes hard, but this shaker here always uh, opened. Funny story on this one, it was given to me and dedicated to me by a customer who actually got really smart with me at the bar the day before. He was a perfect gentleman and a scholar and he just slipped one day. And so the day after he immediately showed up with the Alessi shaker, which at the time I was a young bartender, when you, had your, when you got your hands on an Alessi shaker, it was truly a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those uh, back. So we talked about the cobbler shaker, we talked about the Parisian shaker, and we talked about the Boston shaker. Some of the other forms of shakers that came out, I would love to talk to you about. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the conga. Now, the conga is a three-piece shaker, basically has the top, the, the vessel itself, and the strainer in the middle, but it has these two red knobs. Uh, I like the fact that the cap will screw in. It has these two red knobs, and in essence, when you would shake it, you would basically shake it like this. A uh, really fun shaker to use. Uh, as of recently, this style of shaker has been brought back to the market. Really cool shaker, really fun. This was from the 1930s. Speaking of the 1930s, the Penguin Shaker was originally designed in 1936 by a company called Napier. Now it has become a symbol of mid-century modern, but believe it or not, it's actually older than that. It's more of an art a deco piece, and this is a very uh, cool one itself. By the way, these shakers, all of these, they're actually still relatively inexpensive. There isn't a, a lock or a chokehold in the market on cocktail shaker collectors that are buying everything. So you can find most of these on, on auction websites fairly easy. The next one I wanna talk about is the leg. Would you look at that? Now the leg came uh, also in the red leg, which I believe was a 1927 shaker, but it came in different sizes. Uh, the slipper actually comes off. This shaker here is very top heavy and very delicate. It's a collector's item. And the reason is because it's top heavy, probably not many of them actually made it uh, through the years of history. Uh, you've probably seen me use this shaker before. This one here was the bell. I used it f uh, for a uh, Christmas martini. When you shook it, it would basically ring for you. Another cool one is this dumbbell here. This dumbbell here does not stand up. So you are basically uh, to shake it like this or shake it like this, but when you're making the drink, you better hold it straight and pour in because it will not hold itself. These were just all cool little pieces uh, that were happening at that time. Another cool one that was made, now this is a modern reproduction. This shaker was called the Tells You How, and it basically has the recipe with an arrow and if you match the recipe to the arrow, it will then tell you how to make a drink. For instance, uh, in this case here, we have a sgropino, and if you follow all the directions here, you'll actually make a sgropino. Funny, because you don't make a sgropino in a shaker, but hey, um, who am I to, to say? Um, the other shaker here to keep in mind, where is it, I'm looking, was the pitcher shaker. Uh, this one here was designed to be more in tune with the European style, but it was made in America and it has the handle on it. The reason why the European style, uh, I mentioned that is because, again, it matches a little bit the Parisian, it matches a little bit the cobbler shaker, but this was made in America, so it was uh, uh, that style. Also popular in the 20s and the 30s, again, uh, very easy to find on the web. There are also 
plenty of modern reproductions of them if you're looking for one that just you know looks good and still kind of sort of works the next one i want to talk to you about is actually the thirst extinguisher the thirst extinguisher is very cool because when you pick it up it plays a little song for you you could just wind it here on the bottom uh, and set it down and it won't say a word but the minute you pick it up it will remind everybody that you're about ready to make a cocktail pretty brilliant right uh, after that came, not after that, as part of this era was also uh, the uranium glass, which meant in essence putting uranium in the glass to get these very cool colors. This was very common. However, somewhere in the era of the Cold War, 1940 to 1990s, uh, uranium became uh, not very easy to find. And so the clear glass became more and more of a popular thing. So let's talk about the three uh, shakers that are left as we discussed the three versions that are still readily available today are the Parisian, the Cobbler, and the Boston. Now the Parisian one, again, I mentioned it earlier, you add the ingredients, you pour them in, you shake, very commonly used in Europe and some of the more swanky bars uh, in America. The cobbler shaker, again, which was the one I used my time, uh, the way I would use it, right, what I was, would be I would take the lid, I would put it down, I would take the middle piece, put it down, add the ingredients. Number two meets number one, number three meets number two, finger on top, shake over your shoulder. That is how I used it. And that brings me to this one here. And this is a phenomenon because again, not only was this the first shaker invented, it is also still to this day, the most popular one. Uh, the only evolution that this shaker here has had throughout the years uh, called the Boston Shaker, as I mentioned earlier, is that it has also become a tin on tin versus a glass on tin. Uh, now, I am a big fan of the glass on tin. I have been lucky enough to never break one of these. And the most, uh, the biggest benefit of going tin on tin is the fact that you can eliminate breakage. Now, professional bartenders, they don't break tools very often either. Uh, and so they like the benefit of this is that the shaker is a little lighter. Uh, the, the cocktail will become colder a little bit quicker because stainless steel will, of course, transmit cold temperature faster than a glass will. Um, well, I have, think we have come to the end of this video. I do have one more thing to add. I have the here what is called the Mac Daddy Shaker. And believe it or not, I do know some bars, some of the tiki bars that use this because tiki cocktails are uh, bigger in quantity. And when you have to make three or four, why not have a big shaker? So I also happen to have a brand new one of these. And I'm wondering, just comment below if we should do a giveaway. Uh, I won't announce the giveaway today. Put your comments below if there's any interest in having a 110 ounce shaker called the big one. It is definitely a attention grabber and also practical if you're having a party at home or at your bar and you really have to make quite a few drinks. I am sorry that I have to put this episode to an end because I've really enjoyed talking to you about the evolution of the cocktail shaker. And if you enjoyed this video as well, why don't you go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel and come back to Master Your Glass with me, Livio Laro, where you get expert instruction for everyday consumption.